Hello everyone, I'm Felipe and in this first episode of iOS Quick Start, I'm going to give you a general idea of how to work with URL sessions in less than 10 minutes. Let's do this. Okay, if you got to this video, you're probably interested in implementing a data connection layer for your app. If that's the case, you got to the right place. URL session, formerly known as NSURL session, is a native API provided by Apple so you can have different ways to perform network operations. It supports natively data, file, FTP, HTTP, and HTTPS URL schemes. In your app, you can create multiple sessions depending on your needs. Every session, however, contains its own configuration, which is defined by the class URL session configuration. Now going more in depth about configurations. If you just want to do basic requests, you can use the URL session singleton, and you don't have to create any specific configuration for that. Or you can create a custom session with any of the three existing types of configuration. Your first option is to use the method default. If you decide to do this, you'll be getting the same results as you would by using the singleton. However, this approach gives you the option of getting incremental data. This basically gives you more freedom to customize the session behavior. Your second option is to create an ephemeral configuration. This one is similar to default sessions, but do not write caches, cookies, or credentials to disk. Last but not least, you can create a background configuration. In my opinion, this is one of the most interesting types of configurations. It allows you to perform tasks while the app's not running, and I'll get to that later. Just to summarize and put all these theory in more practical words, if you just want something simple and quick and don't care about partial data, use the singleton. If you need something quick and want access to partial data, use the default session configuration. If you need a session that is not going to write anything in disk, maybe because you're dealing with sensitive data, use an ephemeral session configuration. And last, in case you need to download or upload something in the background, use the background session configuration. Okay, now that you have your session, let's discuss a bit the concept of tasks. Session tasks are objects that contain all the information required to connect to a server. It is basically a description of the request. So, all your requests are encapsulated by tasks. There are three types of tasks. The first one is a data task. Those have a more general and simple implementation, send and receive data. Use these for short pieces of data. The second one is an upload task. Those are specialized in sending data, usually in form of a file, and support background uploads when the app's not running. Third one is a download task. Those retrieve data in the form of a file and also support transfers when the app's not running. Just one thing to remember, all tasks are initialized by the session in a paused state and need to be resumed to start running. Okay, now that we know what sessions and tasks are, let's see some code on how we can use that to connect to a server. If you just want to make a simple call to retrieve the response, use the shared session and block-based request. Here you just need to set up a URL Use the shared session object, add your implementation to handle the response, and resume the task. When the request is complete, you're going to get your call back, and you're done. Now let's see the delegate approach. Let's first create a class, in this case called Downloader. This class will implement the URL session data delegate protocol. After that, one of the things we will need is to have a mutable data object. This will keep the partial data coming from the server. Now we implement the did receive data and the did complete with error methods from the protocol. The first one will be called constantly in order to give you pieces of data that are coming from the server. That's why in the implementation of it, we will just append whatever we are receiving to our mutable data object. Now just to finish the implementation of this class, we add the call to handle the completion of the request. Now let's see how to use this class. First we instantiate it, then we create a session using that object as the delegate, then we create a task, and we resume it. After that, the did receive data method will receive multiple calls in your downloader class. And this will happen until the request is done. And that's when the did complete with error gets called. After that, you're done. Now that we cover the base code to create a session, let's talk about background transfers. With simple adjustments to the implementation, we can take advantage of this awesome feature. First, we'll change the URL to be the one of a file. Then, when creating the session, we now use the class method background with identifier. After that, we use the configuration to create a session, create the task with the download task method, 
and resume it. That's it. Now if the user backgrounds the app, iOS is going to schedule the download to happen even if your app's not active. But then you ask me, what happens when the file is downloaded? In this case, you have to implement the method application handle events for background URL session completion handler in your app delegate and you use the identifier in the parameter to reinstantiate your session and handle the delegate calls. Just an important reminder here, after doing all that, you need to call the completion handler pass it to you in the parameter. That way, you let iOS know that you're done handling the download callback. That's all everyone. I hope I have helped you understand a bit of the basic concepts of URL sessions. All the content of this video was based on Apple's documentation, so make sure to take a look at that if you need more details. The links for those and for a playground file containing all the code presented here are in the description of this video. If you have any questions, leave a comment. If you like this, let me know by leaving a like and subscribe for more. Thanks and good work.